Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Shaniqua, your Navy transition coach, and this is where I help you navigate life both in and out of the Navy. So I receive a lot of questions about the Navy Reserves. And so in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you seven of those frequently asked questions and addressing them. Now these questions are really, really good, so I highly suggest you watch the video all the way to the end. If you wanna learn more, then keep watching. Okay, so the first question is, when can a reservist use the VA loan? So I wanna make sure that I give you um, the place that you will need to go and research yourself, but I'm gonna read it for you. But I want you to um, follow up on what I say and research it yourself. So I'm gonna read it to you word for word. I just went on Google, but it's all from the VA, uh, from VA.gov. So um, here it says National Guard members and reservists are eligible for a VA home loan if they completed at least six years of honorable service, um, are mobilized for active duty for a period of at least 90 days, or are discharged because of a service-connected disability. Okay, so I received a comment and they were telling me that their recruiter told them that um, after they complete their basic training and they finish their A school, then they'll be eligible for these for the VA benefit right and he was or the person was like am I being lied to and I mean if you if you think about it all of that takes around 90 days and all of that is active duty time you're not a, on reservist time right you don't go there you know um, on a weekend to to do boot camp right or to do a school and then you go home you do boot camp you do a school and then you go or or because it's not that way all the time this is kind of how it works you go to boot camp and then you go to your NOSC and then your NOSC is the one that schedules you for an A school okay that's usually how it goes but some people might be able to just go straight into it okay but yes those are the three different ways that you can actually or that you will qualify um, as a reservist to use your VA benefits so another question that I do get is do you get vacation time and leave dates the answer to that is yes and no and here's why so when you are a regular drilling reservist you do not accrue any type of leave days any vacation time okay However, when you are on active duty orders, especially long-term active duty orders, you do accrue leave days, okay? Um, these leave days can be used throughout the uh, time that you're actually on the orders, but you cannot save them to use them to get out of a drill weekend or to get out of an AT or anything like that. You have to use them before the end of those orders. Now, with that being said, I do want to address something that I think is really important, um, especially for those people who are not in the military and who's interested um, in going uh, or joining the military, specifically the Navy. So this is what a lot of people do. They save up a lot of days and then they use that for terminal leave. Okay, so what will happen and basically what terminal leave is, is basically the leave that you go on before the orders end, like at the day. Okay, so what I plan on doing is saving up at least 30 days, okay, um, before my EAOS of leave days so that I can go home, find a home to, to, um, to live at, you know, get a job, spend time with my family, all the things that, that I want to do. Now, the reason that people do this is because you get paid while you are on leave, okay? Your pay doesn't stop. Um, you continue to to receive pay so um, if you're thinking ahead which I highly suggest you do especially if you have overseas orders and you have to find a new place to live or you PCS to somewhere like to another state um, than your home state then um, I highly suggest you save up those leave days um, as much as you possibly can so that you can actually prepare yourself to go back to um, normal civilian life or normal um, drilling life i'll say um when you're done with the orders the next question i receive a lot is can you travel the answer is absolutely yes and i would dare to say that you could possibly travel more than an active duty sailor could travel okay now the reason i say this is because on active duty you don't really know where you're gonna go um 
until you're like an A school, like until you're done, if you're on active duty. And that could be a, a, a shore duty, it could be a ship, it could be assigned to some ship that's in port, like you don't know where you're gonna go, okay? You go wherever they tell you to go. And then when you get there, you still go wherever they tell you to go. To go. So if the ship that you go to, for example, is in dry dock, okay? Um, or they're decommissioning that ship is not going nowhere you're not traveling for the remainder of your orders because the whole ship is decommissioning okay um, or however long that whole process actually lasts now if you go to the reserves um, you can pick to go wherever you want to go it could be within the country it could be outside of the country um, and still because you have a training unit Okay, and I'm going to get into um, this whole what in the world is a training unit, drilling unit, all this stuff in another video. But because you have a training unit, that unit could possibly have their own missions, like their own um, places that they go. I know before I came on these orders, um, my training unit was actually planning to go um, on a deployment to South Korea. I believe that that's where the location was and I thought that was actually pretty cool to be able to go to South Korea or maybe they said that that was the last location that they went to but my point here is you can definitely travel okay so the next question I do receive a lot is how do I actually get on orders well what you do is you go on to zip serve okay this is a portal basically with a ton of different options or opportunities for you to actually go on different types of order what orders whether it's in rate um, assignment or an out of rate assignment it's just many different types of things that you can actually do um, so what you would do is you would put your information on there so your rank your rate um, uh, let's see how long you want to be gone like they'll give you like a, a range of days They'll give you the type of orders that you want to go on, whether it's AT, ADT, ADSW orders, um, definite recall, um, location that you want to go to. Like it's so many different um, bits of information that you could put on there to go to where you want to go. Now, that's one option. That's the best option, honestly. Um, however, there's other options. One of the, another one is mobile mobilization. So you can go to the mobilization section um, on My Navy Portal um, or My Navy Home Port to find um, different types of mobilizations that's, that's available. Now the other place that I would say um, to go to try and get on orders is to go on U.S. Navy Community or I'm sorry, U.S. Navy Reserve Community, and I'll put that right here because it didn't quite come out like it was supposed to, but. Um, go to this facebook group okay join it this is only if you are a reservist or you're if you're active duty going reserves it's not really for civilians sorry um but if you go on to this um this group you you'll see people saying hey this is so and so from this command we're looking for people for to fill this position here's the information that you need here's how to qualify here's the contact info all of that reach out on a facebook group and it's like, well, that's actually pretty great. So this community, I know it's not, um, I don't believe it's like Navy sponsored or anything like that, but it is a really, really great resource to any um, active duty sailors or reservists who are interested in um, keeping up with the, the Navy or want to ask more questions. And it's just a bunch of reservists. Um, not just saying just, but you know, it's a bunch of reservists who are helping people, which is really, really great and was definitely helpful to me. Okay. So another question I get quite often is how long do I actually need to serve in the reserves in order to qualify for education benefits? Okay. Now this is an interesting question and it's very, mm, it's a lot of information to give. So what I'm going to do is, um, go over the. Um, Montgomery GI Bill Selected Reserve um, information um, from the VA website and then I want you to go and do your own research because I do believe don't quote me here but I do believe that you can actually receive full education benefits by serving 36 months 
on the active duty. So if you go on some long-term orders for like three years, okay, extend up to five years or whatever, I do believe you do get to um, receive those full active duty um, benefits, okay? But don't quote me. So that's why I'm only gonna go over what um, the VA shows me about the Montgomery GI Bill selected reserves, okay? Now, again, this information it's not timeless okay things change within the military so this is for now as of um 2021 february um this is the information that i do have for you okay so i'm just gonna read through it and um hopefully it makes sense to you okay if it doesn't please feel free to leave a comment down below all right so here it says the montgomery gi bills uh, selected Reserve program offers up to 36 months of education and training benefits. If you are a member of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard Reserve, um, Army National Guard, or Air National Guard, you may be eligible for benefits. Um, but we're going to read a little bit more to actually see if you qualify. Okay? So it says, am I eligible for education benefits under this program you may be eligible for benefits under this program if you meet the requirements listed below okay and here's where it comes to well how long do i actually have to serve here it says one of these must be true have a six-year obligation you agreed to serve six years basically is what it's saying um in the selected reserves or you are an officer in the selected reserves and you agree to serve years or six years in addition to your initial service obligation okay so the next thing that has to be true is all of these okay one you have to complete your your initial active duty for training okay next is um you have to have a high school diploma or something equal um like a gd Okay, and you also must stay in good standing while in an active selected reserve unit. All right, so here's something that I want to make sure you understand. What benefits uh, can you actually get? So you can get up to $384 a month in compensation payments for up to 36 months. All right. Um, now, I'm not going to read this whole entire thing, but what I will do for you is leave this link where I'm reading this information from in the comments so that you can go and read it yourself. But um, again, please take this uh, bit of information with a grain of salt. Um, continue to ask questions. Um, I'll continue to do research, whatever you need. I'll try and find out the answer, but please um, make sure you go to the website and, and finish reading. Okay, so the next question is, is it easy to go reserve then go active? Not necessarily. Um, and the reason I say that is because what's currently available right now, let's say you've never been in the military, um, you're not a reservist or anything like that. What's available right now for active duty is not necessarily what's available right now for a reservist, okay? Or what's available in the future um, for active duty is not necessarily what's available right now. So I can't say yes, but I also can't say no. Um, but I hope that information helps. If you want to go active duty, um, then make up your mind and go active. If you want to go reserves, then make up your mind and go reserves, but it's not necessarily going to be an easier option. However, I will say that it is an option and I think that is good enough. Okay, so the next question is, how much do you actually get paid in the reserves? Now, this is a really good and valid question, um, but I do not want you to be surprised when you realize that you're not getting paid as much in the reserves as you would on active duty. So when you are trying to figure out if you want to go active duty or reserves, this is going to be a huge factor. Some people, they have a civilian job already and it pays well, but they need better medical coverage, so they join the reserves, right? Some people, they want to completely get out of their hometown, do something different with their life, something um, that they've never done before, have a challenge, um, something consistent and long-term, so they go active duty. 
but it's very important before I even get into this that you make up your mind as to what it is that you want to do for your life and for your career okay now you can go to um, um, DFAS to find the pay chart um, for how much a drilling reservist actually gets paid um, so when you go on to DFAS or you can just Google um, military pay chart okay so what will what you'll see is the active duty um, pay but you keep scrolling keep scrolling and you'll see the drill pay chart so when you are looking at the pay chart and you see where it says one drill I need you to understand that a drill weekend is broken down into four periods okay now you have two drill days okay not trying to throw up any signs or anything but just so you can understand you have two drill days you have Saturday and you have Sunday okay you have the morning and you have the eve or the afternoon drill okay so you have to muster basically sign in make sure they see that you're signed in um, for the morning and the afternoon okay so if you look at this right it's one two three four okay four drill periods if you say well um i'm not gonna you know stay for long i'm not gonna stay the whole thing you know the whole day or whatever because i don't really feel like it or you don't want to tell anybody that you're leaving or anything like that um then you're only going to get paid for three of those drill periods so when you are expecting a full drill weekend paycheck and you don't get it well you did not muster um, and they didn't put your information in the system so that you can actually get paid. So that's why it's broken down like that. So you can understand that it's four drill periods in one weekend and um, you know how much you're actually supposed to get paid. Okay. All right, so that's all the questions that I have for you today. If you have any questions yourself, please, please leave me a comment below. Send me an email. Tell me a situation if there's anything you want me to particularly talk about um, as far as transitioning into the military or leaving out of the military, going reserves, leaving the reserves. Please let me know. I have a lot of experience and I know people um, who also have a lot of experience. So I'm so glad that you were able to join me on today's video. If you have not already subscribed, please consider doing so. Um, make sure you turn your notification bells on because I do post weekly videos and I am so, so excited to be able to help you. Until next time, bye-bye.